These are our supplies for our co-optation splint that we place at Harborview Medical Center. We have a long strand of six inch tubular bias. We have six inch cotton web roll. We have generally a 10 ply thick, uh, five by 30 inch plaster uh, slab. We have our scissors, ace wrap, and we also have a pillow or a sheet that you roll up and tape uh, to use as an abduction type pillow if you're not putting the patient directly into a, a specialized abduction brace with an abduction pillow. Next we're going to be applying a coaptation splint. This is commonly used in mid-shaft uh, humerus fractures that are uh, displaced or angulated. <clears throat> as always, it's very important to uh, make sure you have appropriate neurovascular exam, especially in the setting of a Holstein-Lewis fracture or a distal spiral fracture of the humerus making sure that the radial nerve is intact is especially important uh, as that is well documented to be a potential complication of that fracture. Also check uh, vascular status. The next step is uh, make sure you have discussed uh, and have proper analgesia for the patient. This is a relatively uh, invasive uh, splinting technique, so that's very important. <clears throat> have all your supplies, make sure you've reviewed your x-rays um, and we go from there. First thing that we generally do is on the good arm, we take our plaster or another measuring device and we measure where our splint is going to go, pretty much as high as you can in the axilla, three finger breaths down, the splint generally wraps around the arm and it will come up to the neck. You can always turn it back so this is about the appropriate length. <clears throat> we may take off an inch. The next step is to make your padding for this. How we do this is by measuring how long we're using our measured uh, plaster and by about two inches on either end uh, just start layering about five or six layers of our cotton web roll offsetting it a little to adequately cover our plaster. We do use uh, five inch, uh, the width of the plaster is five inch and the web roll is is uh, six, so it does have some natural cover. We are going to need two of these, one for each side, so repeat the process. So now, as you can see, we have two multi-layer cotton web rolls. Next, what we do is lay them out to make a sandwich and also prepare our long strand of tubular bias. So we'll be placing these inside. Have that ready. Take our plaster and we dip it. Make sure to wet it thoroughly. Laminate thoroughly. We take and make our plaster, cotton web roll, burrito.
Next, we'll uh, need an assistant of Dr. Thayer here who's going to help me. She will take one end and roll up, stick her hand in. to the other end. Perfect. We're going to take our web roll plaster burrito and gently to keep it from rolling, put it in the, generally in the middle, try to get it in the middle of our six inch tubular bias. Feel you've got an adequate amount. Make sure it's still flat and well padded. We'll take it at either end. We split and tear the tubular bias. To a um, couple inches from the end. Helps when somebody applies a little bit of traction force. Next, so we have our burrito in the middle, two sections with two limbs that we'll be using to tie around the patient. Next, Dr. Thayer will help me. You will take, know where the end of your padding is. You should still have ample padding at the end. This is where it's a little more invasive than some of the other splinting techniques. You do need to lift the patient's arm, get the padded portion into the axilla. And then from there, there's varying techniques how to, how, how to tie this off. You can come around the patient, either either strap it on one of them underneath the other patient's arm. That can cause some irritation in the uh, contralateral axilla, or you can simply go around the pie. Bring the splint, cradling the patient's elbow, up their arm on the lateral aspect. You do need to extend your, extend your split, you can do that if it comes up too high. Don't want to cause any compression in the neck. If you need to roll back some of your padding or your plaster, you can do that at this time. You do want it to come up a little bit past the humeral head. Extend your split if you need to. And wrap up around the patient. This one is somewhat better done if you can wrap this one, the upper one, underneath the arm to kind of get a crisscross cross pattern. From there, with the patient's arm cradled. So making sure that there is no sharp padding or no sharp plaster in the patient's axilla and that it's well padded. The plaster extends high enough like to wrap an ace wrap around. Dr. Thayer, if you can hold that. Thank you. We're wrapping an ace wrap around to hold this in place. Remembering to keep it on the lateral aspect of the humerus. Keep it from going to anterior. Here, you can simply tuck your ace wrap in or tape it if you have it. We avoid using any uh, metal prongs here as they can migrate and cause an issue. So keeping uh, the arm, uh, the plaster on the lateral aspect and on the medial aspect. Generally, these fractures uh, in obese people or people with big chests uh, fall into a significant amount of varus. So a valgus. Uh, load is applied, so up high, and then 
on the inside of the medial elbow, distributing the weight with the palm um, of your hand, the broad surface, to not create any uh, indentations or ripples. A uh, valgus uh, force is applied while the plaster sets, making sure that your plaster ends up high and you hold that until your plaster is dry. Then to further avoid falling into varus, this is where either a um, abduction, uh, a, a brace with an abduction pillow can be applied or a pillow keeping that elbow from falling in towards the body or into varus, as we would say. And that can be applied. Then after this, generally a sling is applied to the patient. One of the main factors to uh, note is after your splint is applied, it is critical to do a neurovascular exam to reassess any change in uh, neurovascular uh, function with primary concern about the radial nerve and radial nerve function. <clears throat> As with manipulation of the fracture, it can become entangled or entrapped within the fracture site during your reduction. Uh, let your uh, nurses know that over the next period of time too, if the patient starts complaining of any neurovascular sequelae or symptoms, you know, in the hand or up the arm, you should be, uh, the physician should be made aware uh, uh, as soon as possible. Uh, if there is any change in neurovascular exam, one, uh, the splint can be removed and a uh, period of watching uh, should occur and reapplication of the splint if appropriate. So once your coaptation splint uh, has been applied, uh, you can then there's different ways to tie this at the top. Uh, for this example, we have the medial strands coming up superior, and these will be tied over top. The upper strands are going underneath the contralateral uh, axilla and will be tied in that fashion. Not a, a tight, but not too tight, not as, uh, recommended it does need to not allow the splint to you know, fall off um, <clears throat> but with the tubular bias there is a little bit of give but you do need to be cognizant of possible uh, skin compromise where there is too much constriction with patient moving or with uh, with time generally our coaptation splints are converted to a sarmento brace in a uh, seven to 10 days uh, or as deemed appropriate.